Hi, uh, this is Sham Sai again, and welcome to Image Processing Made Easy with Mathematica 11. Um, Sham Sai from Sham Sai Research, and this is part one, part one of a three or four part series on image processing using Mathematica 11. So let's get right to it. So um, today we're gonna go over some basic image processing um, techniques that you can do in Mathematica. Um, basic image processing, we're going to start with basic image editing, so ma manipulating an image, um, applying effects and filters, similar to Snapchat and Instagram to these images, and enhancement and restoration of any old images you might have. It's all very, very easy using Mathematica 11. Let's see how far we get to today. So um, let's start with basic editing. So um, I've got some basic like operations you can do with Mathematica that just make it really easy to edit your pictures to make them look really nice. So here is here's one right here. So image crop. What image crop is, let me pull this over here, it crops the image by removing the borders of uniform color. So as we can see in this picture here, these borders are all uniform black. So we should see these borders get away and it really focuses in on the central image because it's cropping away the border of uniform color. Let's see how it works. And there we go. Um, we see all this black area on the sides have been cut off and we see a nice centered earth. What's next? Um, this is really nice for just cutting through any image. Um, another w another cutting another cutting tool of image processing is image partition which, which has the ability to um, cut a picture into many like parts. Uh, let's pull up the documentation a little faster for this thing. Um, image partition s partitions the image into an array of S by S pixel images. So this is going to be um, scale. So so a nice tool to use here is scale it, right? So it's one third by one half. Um, one third of this by one half of this. It's scaled. So this way we're cutting it into six pieces because it's three by two, one third here. So just imagine drawing. Um, lines dividing the picture from one third, and then a line dividing it in half, and you can see the six, six, six boxes. And let's see, this in the action will last. There we go. So we've decided to divide it up. We got this box, this box, this box here, this box here, this box here, this box here. Just really nice. Just partition the image, and um, it's 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 pretty nice. Just just for any image you might need to cut. Um, instead of doing by hand, you can cut it using Mathematica. Um, and say you have a cut up image, you can also image assemble. Given this, given this right here, we can, so in case you didn't know the percent sign, gives the um, last output. So image assemble, just as the name says, assembles an image. And we get the back. So given this list of broken up images, you can assemble the old image back together. And it's really, really nice, really, really efficient. You can see they're exactly the same. Nothing's been lost. Uh, and then some other basic things you should be able to do with Photoshop, but Mathematica does it as well. Um, you can r rotate the image by how, h however you want. This one's going to rotate to 20 degrees. There we go. Um, and we can also reflect the image as you can do in any photo editor, but Mathematica can do it too. So this, all these image editing um, basic manipulation, it's all, it's all, it all can be done with everything else, with like Photoshop and all other um, image and photo manipulators, image and photo editors. But given a set of data, right, say you have a bunch of image data, right, so data faces or data of pictures of zebras, right, whatever you, whatever, whatever you have, you can, um, and say there's like the images are like one million images, you can apply the, you can, you can apply image crop to all of them, and then you can center in on the, the the main object in the image, or you can partition all of them at once instead of doing by hand for each one, photoshopping each one by hand. You can do it all together with Mathematica. It makes it really efficient, really simple, really easy to work with. Okay, what's next? Um, next, we can also change the color instead of just doing changing the geometry of the image. We can change the color of the image. Um, let's look at color convert this function right here. Um, again, just converting the grayscale. Uh, Instagram to do this, but again, if you have color data that you want to put in grayscale, black and white, that's my extra man. Um, some more coming up here. You can binarize the image. Um, so what binarizing image does? Let's pull up this for 
uh, let me let's try, try to get some technical here, right? Let's try to get technical here. It creates a binary image, okay? So it, I'm not sure if it's exactly half and half, uh, but it's a globally determined threshold, right? So take that threshold to be 0.5. If all values, all, all, all um, pixel values are above 0.5 in this image, it, it rounds it up to 1 and makes it black. If it's below 0.5, it rounds it down to 0, it makes it white. I might have to flip flop, flip vice versa. Um, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, and then you just get a flat black and white image. Really nice because now we have, well, now we can see this pixel. Some that are lighter than others, some that are darker than others. You can see how the image is binarized. What a great tool. Um, see all, all of these color separating tools. Really nice for just data analysis, right? Data analysis. If you have a picture of like a fly's wing. And you want to see the darkest parts, not not see the, maybe the dust on the Microsoft lens. You can binarize it and just see the black parts, the dark parts of the wing. Um, you can also color separate, which is pretty nice. Um, color se separate um, separates the three colors, right? So blue, red, and um, green. Let's see this in action. Um, yes. So. Um, it, it separates the three colors. So as you know, that these are R each pixel here is an RGB value. Um, and basically it's taking the RGB values from each one and just taking like the first RGB value. So like the first node is R, right? And so this is just plotting all the Rs as numbers, as pixels, as zeros and ones. Um, I'm just plotting them all here. And so this is the red, G, B, green, blue. So um, that's pretty nice if you just want to like take an image and separate it into its component parts, component R, G, B, R, G, B, um, pictures, images. Um, but again, you can, as Mathematica has this over and over, if you can do something, you can do its opposite too. We have color combine, which, um, and here we're doing something interesting. We're using different permutations, right? So. Uh, we're combining R with G with G with B, which gives you the, the original image, right? But we're also combining them in different ways to get you different um, images, which are, which, are, which look pretty nice. Um, this is just what Mathematica can do. Just this this I, I, uh, this 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 line of code right here is just for fun, but uh, this this function color combine can be used in many many different ways. Um, how are we doing on time? We are at seven minutes, not bad. Okay, so we can also do a lot more um, just by combining a lot of these functions, right? So here we're using um, image assemble and we're using image resize and we're using image compose, right? So we're using a bunch of different, a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different combinations of these past, past functions. And um, you'll see what it's gonna do. So it's gonna combine <laughs> the two images. And it's gonna take a second. Hopefully, this doesn't take too long. But um, it's the, fi the finished product, product will show you the power of Mathematica. There we go. So it what what this thing what this um, function did it put this image in a corner of this image and then combined the two. So um, it looks really really nice. I, I don't know about you, but this looks really aesthetically pleasing. I can't say the word for some reason. And it's like a sunset on the the river here. I'm not sure what river that is, but it looks really nice, doesn't it? Just like just shows you the power of Mathematica. I don't think anyone can do this on Photoshop. Actually, I know a person that can, but I can do it on Mathematica too, just with these. It's a few lines of code. It's five lines of code. Not even that long. It's pretty easy. So um, you can also use. Filters, right? So um, your famous Snapchat filters, Instagram filters. I don't know what people are doing these days. I mean, yeah. Okay, I'm not a big fan of those um, so social media tools, but I can do the same without an Instagram account or a Snapchat account. I can do the same with Mathematica. Let's see it. It's gonna take a second, but yes. So they apply the filter, the oil painting, oil painting filter to this goose picture. Charcoal filter, sonorization filter. Salt and pepper noise, acid filter, who knew? Embossing filter, Gaussian noise filter. Beautiful, I love it. Again, um, this can be used just for fun, right? So this picture looks pretty nice. This picture looks really nice too, like a oil painting. <laughs> but again, it can be used for data. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it because just it, as the function says, it's image effect, it's just adding an effect. 
So, uh, again, not recommended, but of course you can use it to data, or you can just use it for fun. Um, either way. This, however, is not for fun. This, you can do a lot more with what's about to come. I'm gonna put three images right here. Okay, let's see if you can see what's wrong with each one of them. Okay, so three images. So, <laughs> the names of the images tell you. This is a blur image. Can you think Mathematica can, fix, can fix this? Do you think so? We'll see. Um, <laughs> as most of you can see, this is a picture of the moon landing. Uh, this is a noisy image, right? You, you guys can see this almost like RGB values just like floating around here. Um, this is the Pantheon in Rome, I believe? I could be wrong. If, um, fix me in the comments if I'm wrong. And um, yeah, but you can see just noise around here. And if you're a tourist that took this picture or um, took this picture, uploaded it to a computer and your computer did this, you want the real picture back. You don't want to travel back to Rome or Greece or where, wherever you took this picture. And um, you can fix it with Mathematica. And again, a picture of Lincoln. So if you have any old family portraits, um, old, old old pictures of yourself even, and the scratch, right? You see the scratch going through. But you want to fix it. You think you can? Oh yes, you can with Mathematica. So let's work on the blur image first. Um, blur image can be fixed with just a simple function. Um, one we've been over already. Image assemble. Okay. So let me run these pictures. Just give them black. Black means it's saved as a variable. And basically, Im image assemble, and then we're gonna image deconvolve. Um, you can look at the doc documentation for yourself. It gives a deconvolution, deconvoluted image um, using kernel cur, which is which the kernel I'm using here is the Gaussian matrix. Um, if you want to go technical, you can go technical, but this works too. Um, as you can see, you've got the blurry image on the left, and a really nice. Though it's not perfect, it's not perfect. I'll give you that. But compared to what it was before, it's really nice, really nice looking, looking on the right. Um, we can do even more. We can fix the noise image. So fixing the noise image is just as easy. Um, you just use a total variation filter for the REZ, which I'm using here. We're just using a basic image take, um, basic function. And um, pretty nice, pretty nice function right there. Let's run it. It's going to fix this um, noisy picture right here. And it's going to take a second because, again, we are applying um, this poison um, filter um, to the image so it's gonna take a second but it should run any second now my computer is slow there we go so this zoomed in as we saw um, image take was zooming in on this section of the picture right and you can see it easily on the zoomed in section there's a lot of RGB value mixed up right I don't know um, your computer can cause this a lot of things can cause this type of noisy image, but not not to fear because Mathematica 11 can save the day with um, just an image assemble and mapping onto um, this total variation filter. It's pretty easy, and again, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. If you want to do it by hand with Photoshop, go for it. Go for it. I'm I'm not stopping you. But Mathematica makes it a lot more efficient, a lot easier to work with. Um, and let's do one more thing. Let's fix this. Ooh, let's fix this thing. Let's fix this damn scratched image. So what we have here is what we call a mask, okay? So this mask, we're gonna try to overlay this mask. As you can see, this lines up exactly to the scratch on this image. We're trying to overlay this mask onto the image and see if we can fix this scratch. Do you think you can do it? Do you think Mathematica can do it? Just basic image assemble and in paint. Basic stuff right here, guys. Um, again, I'm okay. I'm not going through all the doc documentation and all the technical stuff in this video. Um, again, if you want to go through that, F1 on any function, and you get it. And this is the example right here where I'm showing you. So yes, this is what we have, and it just fixes it really easily, no scratch, and it's perfect. Any old images, this is how you fix it. It's super easy. Uh, and. So, you guys have seen how a Mathematica has tons of image editing tools, image image um, fixing tools, image image manipulation right here. And for, uh, for a programming language that's math called Mathematica, it has a lot of image processing tools as well, image processing tools. Um, so, just remember, um, there'll be a part two and a part three coming up soon. And if not up yet, check out the links below if when they are. And remember to like, 
subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave some comments. If you have an idea for a new video, for a new topic I can go, go over, that's something that might confuse you in Mathematica 11, leave a comment below, I'll get to it, I promise. Um, and yeah, subscribe. This is Shamsai signing off. Uh, but before I do, just play around, okay? Play around. I'm not doing these videos uh, for anything other than to help people uh, with Mathematica, right? And how they can use Mathematica um, to their benefits. And I know a lot of people have Mathematica and a lot of people don't use it as, as much as they could. So um, just use it as, as, as much as you want. Play around. Look, look at how much you can do. Look at how much you can do. You can fix scratches on the images. So cool. So yeah, play around and <laughs> don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.